Hey, this is Andy with Rocket City Pinball. This video is going to demonstrate how to install my James Bond Spectre Ramp Flasher replacement mod. Uh, that's going to come in here and we're going to replace this flasher bulb cover with one that's a little bit taller and has a nice Spectre logo on it and is available in several different colors. So when you order this kit, you're going to receive this batch of stuff right here. Uh, you're going to have the flasher cover itself. You're going to have a little cap that goes on top. There will be a hex sleeve and one screw, a lock washer, and a washer all in black. And I'll explain to you later where those go. Now the tools you're going to need to do this are a 5 16th ratcheting wrench. You also need an 11 30 seconds nut driver. Um, could also get the work done with a socket wrench. You might want to have that on hand just in case. And also a um, Phillips head screwdriver. I always recommend you have a magnetic dish for your tools for your um, hardware that you're going to take loose. Uh, a little magnetic extension rod here in case you drop something. There's a socket wrench that I grabbed just in case I needed it. Um, I also recommend you have a couple of rags and you're also going to need a 24 inch 2x4. Um, and again I'll explain what that's for later. Also up here just for reference um, I have a couple of different uh, colors just to show you some of the different colors I'm going to have. I have these colors and others. I also have another <laughs> another one printing right now actually, a more golden orange. Uh, here's some more of the caps printing right now. Anyway, um, so I'll have several different translucent colors for you to, to choose from. Now, to do this work, um, there's several steps to do it because it's kind of a little bit more complicated because you have to take this whole ramp assembly out. It's uh, several steps, so we're going to demonstrate that for you today. So the first thing you're going to do, um, I always recommend you cut off power to the playfield or just shut the game off completely. Um, I also recommend, because the first thing we're going to do is lift up the playfield, so I recommend you stuff a rag into the opening where the balls come out, or you can just take the balls out completely. I've already taken them out on um, this game right here, so that they don't come spilling out. So we're going to lift the playfield up first, get underneath. Now the reason we're under here, you're going to grab your nut driver with your 11 30 seconds socket on it, um, and we need to remove three nuts that are underneath the playfield here. One of them is down here behind this big bundle of wires here. Another one is up here, and the third one is over here. Okay, so those three nuts need to be removed. Now be careful when you're doing that because as you'll notice right here on these wire bundles, these stickers that Stern put on here, the adhesive is not strong. Most of them are falling off. So as you're trying to take this nut off back here, you might end up inadvertently knocking those labels off. Now, I know you know how to remove a nut, so I'm going to pause the video here while I take these nuts off so you don't have to watch me undo those. Okay, so now I've taken those three nuts off again. So now you see there's a stud sticking out right here. Another one right there, another one right there where I took those nuts off. So, next thing we're going to do is we're going to bring the playfield back down and we're going to set it on these little rubber nubs up here. Uh, as we bring it down, we're going to sit it on where the lockdown bar goes on those little rubber nubs. Okay, now, next step is... We need to get better access to this area here. As you can see, like I mentioned, we need to pull this stuff out, but there's not a lot of access with the wall right here. So we need to get better access. So that's where our two x four comes in. So if you have a 24 inch long two x four, you'll notice that there is a handle on the back side of the play field here. And what you can do is you can lift up this handle and set your two x four into the game on the bottom of the cabinet and just kind of perch the handle on the two by four, just like that. So you take a look in there, see what that looks like. Okay, so so you got the two by four holding up the play field by the handle right here. Okay, so now you can see that we've done that. You can see that now we have all kinds of access to this area here, which is what we needed. Okay, so now that we can get to this area, you can see that we're close to the side rails and you see there's all parts that we're gonna be messing with. So I'm gonna recommend you grab some more rags I'm gonna grab a rag and I'm gonna stick it underneath the area right here just to, for some protection. We're gonna come back and adjust that in a minute anyway. Okay, so those three nuts that we removed from the bottom of the play field were part of what's holding on this whole assembly, but there's one more thing that's um, holding it on and that's one little screw. 
So you're gonna grab your screwdriver, your Phillips set screwdriver. Um, hopefully it's magnetic tip. If it's not a magnetic tip, come in here and take these two screws out and remove this plastic because the screw that we need to access is down in here. We're gonna look at where the screw is here so you can see where I'm pointing. Okay, so down in here. Right there. That screw down there is the one we're gonna take out. Okay, now if you were good at playing Operation when you were a kid, you can go through this hole in the plastic and just undo that screw. Again, if you have a magnetic screwdriver. If you don't have a magnetic screwdriver, take these two screws out, take this plastic off, and then you can get to it. All right, so from that view, you can't see the screw. But there you go, just got it loose. So now I'm gonna slowly bring it up and out. Okay, and I'm gonna put that screw in my magnetic dish so I don't lose it. So, <clears throat> with the three nuts under the play field and that screw, now everything has been taken off that we need to take this whole assembly out. So here's kind of a tricky process to take this out. There are two posts, two studs that stick down from these two ramps right here. There's also a post that's on the back side here that I'll show you in a second, and it's also attached to the rest of the game by these two legs of this habit trail. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to grab the ramps and we're going to lift them up to help pull the posts up out of the playfield, like this. Okay, now they both come loose. Now that those are out, in fact, if you look underneath the ramp here, you'll see what I mean about those posts that sit in there. Okay, so the next thing we need to do is we've got to pull this whole assembly back this way towards where I'm standing to help free it, to free the ends of these two rails here. So I'm going to pull back on the whole assembly. Might have to wiggle it around a little bit, and there we go. So now I popped off of these two rails right here. Now the last bit, I'm going to have the camera come around back to this side. The last step in getting this out is one more stud. This is the third stud underneath the play field right here that started coming out. This piece of metal that it's attached to is a little bit flexible, so you can just push on it a little bit, and then you should be able to lift the whole thing out, and now that's free as well. So, so now we have the whole assembly free, and I'm going to just kind of pull it back towards me and rotate it up and over the top of the habit trails. Now that rag that we already stuck over here before, I'm just gonna lay that out a little bit more to protect my play field and the edge and the sidewall from anything that's sticking down. And I'm gonna grab another rag and lay it right here on top of the habit trails so I can just set this down. Okay, so now you can see we've got the whole assembly out. The wires are still connected and you do have a little bit of slack when you lift it up. You, um, you'll have a little slack when you lift it up, but um, you can't pull it too far because the wires are too connected, but you should have enough play to at least move it around. Because what we're gonna do next is we need to get to a couple of nuts that are underneath the flasher. <clears throat> All right, so let's take the camera and we're going to look straight down over this assembly. And you'll notice on this assembly, you'll see what looks like a rivet head right here. Okay, that is another stud that has the nut and the lug for this flasher underneath this whole assembly. The other one is right here on this side. So those are the two studs where the nuts are installed that hold this flasher in place. So we need to get underneath there and take those off. So the first one, this is where you're gonna need your 5 16 ratcheting wrench because it's kind of a tricky area to get under, but you can do it with one of these. So the first one I'm gonna take off is this one that's closer to where my hands are. And I'm gonna come underneath, you can see, since we're looking underneath here, you can see right there, there's the nut with the LED board and then the lug of the flasher cover. So that's the nut we're gonna take off first. So I'm gonna come on under here with my ratcheting wrench and get on that like so, and then I'm gonna take it off. So we're gonna pause the video here so you don't have to watch me do that. It's uh, it's gonna take several cranks because you don't have all the, you know, you don't have a huge range of motion here, so it's gonna take a little bit to get it off. So we'll pause the video and we'll get this one off. Okay, so we got the one nut off. You can see that the light board is kind of just hanging loose there. So I'm just gonna push that, that board down. Sorry, I'm trying not to block the camera here, but. Okay, so now the light board is free. 
As you can see, this is not an actual flasher bulb per se. This is just a surface mounted diode. This is what they're using for flashers these days. So just kind of push that out of your way because now we need to get to the other nut, which is on the far side of that. So again, this camera, from this camera angle, you can see here's the flasher bulb cover and way over here is where the other nut is. There it is. So there's the other nut right there. So again, I'm gonna stick the ratcheting wrench underneath there to get on that one. And it helps, you can kind of guide it if you use your hands, you can guide it from the front side to get to where it's supposed to be. So now I'm on it. So once again, you know, I have a little bit of room to work on it. I'm going to pause the video so you don't have to watch me stand, sit here and crack this thing out of here. Okay, so now I've, un I've removed the second nut, which was up here on this side. So now the flasher bulb cover should just fall right out the bottom, like so. There we go. Now you'll notice my new one's a little bit taller than that one, and that's on purpose. Okay. So you're going to bring your new one, whatever color it is that you ordered, and you're going to bring it in and you're going to um, install it underneath. But I want to show you first before I do that, you'll notice that there's a little bit of a seam on here. This is uh, an artifact of 3D printing. Every layer in the 3D print has to start and end somewhere. So I typically organize mine so that they start and end in the same place on pieces that are round because there's no sharp corner to hide it. Now this is going to sound kind of counterintuitive because obviously you don't want to see this. But I'm actually going to have you orient this seam so that it's towards where the player is standing. Rather than, rather than facing back towards the back of the machine, we're actually going to have you place it forward. And the reason for that is because when you put it in here, the way that I've designed this, the hex sleeve, I'm sorry, the hex spacer that's right here in front of it is going to hide that seam. Okay, so I've got the lugs onto the screw. So you can see when it's in place here, the seam there lines up with this hex spacer. So when you're over here where, where the player is standing, you're actually not gonna see that seam at all. And then when you come in with the cap at the end and you cover that up, you're not gonna see that seam anymore either. So by orienting it forward, it's gonna be totally hidden. It's counterintuitive, but that's how it's gonna go, so trust me. Okay, so now what you're gonna do is you're gonna bring your um, the nuts that you removed, install this one first, the one that's closer to the center of the play field, um, install this one first, and then the other one you're gonna install the light board back on uh, I'm going to put the first one back on here first right now while we pause the video again. Okay, so we've got the nut on that's on this side. You can see at the end of my finger here, that's where we've got that first nut installed. So now we're going to install the one on the back, but you have to also install the light board as well. So we're going to come back around and I'll show you how that goes. Okay, so on this side, remember, it's that stud right there that we're trying to install the nut on the bottom side, so let's look underneath. And you'll see, remember, we have the light board that's hanging down, so we have to get the light board onto that stud right there, like that. Okay, so you make sure you get the light board on there, and then you come in like that, and then you're gonna come in and put that nut on there. So once again, I'm gonna pause the video so you don't have to watch me install a nut. Okay, so we got the other nut back on, but I just wanna show you something real quick. As you tighten this nut down, sometimes the light board doesn't end up in the right position where it's not centered with the flasher. So just loosen the nut just enough so you can rotate your light board kind of like that, and then you can get it centered underneath the flasher and then give it one last crank. Okay, so the next step is to put this whole assembly back into the play field. So I'm gonna remove this rag, remove this rag, Pinched on there, there we go. Okay, now to get this whole assembly back into the play field, first thing we've got to get our ends of our ramps back under the habit trail. So you should be able to rotate it back this way. Just give it a little angle and then go under, like so. And then working backwards from what we did, the first the last part that came out of the play field was this post over here. So we're gonna show you this post over here. This one here, you should be able to flex this a little bit. Again, you have to kind of maneuver things around a little bit to get everything to line up, but you want to get this. You can push on this piece here and get that stud into that hole right there, like that. Okay, and then, then the next part of the process is going to be to get the ends of this habit trail back into these little open slots here. So again, kind of manipulate your ramp around. Oops, I went too far. I'm gonna bring it down. So that you can get these into that opening like that. Okay, and then if you're lucky, as I just was that time, those two posts that are underneath these ramps should fall right into their holes there. If they haven't, 
then you might be pulled up in a position kind of like this and you can just move them around, tug them around until they go in the hole. So got these two studs in, got that stud in, and got the habit trail into the end of the ramp. So that's all set back into the play field. Now remember there was one screw right in there that we got to put back in. Get my magnetic tip screwdriver again and play operation again. So remember if you had to remove these two screws on this plastic to get to that, then obviously I'll have to put that back on when we're done, but I'm gonna play operation and go right through this hole and put that screw back where it goes. Okay, now at this step in the process, the next part would be to go back underneath the play field and put the nuts back on those two studs and the other one back here. So I'm going to remove my two by four that's back here. I'm gonna remove my two by four. Just lift this up, take this out, lower that down. Okay, and then from here, I would lift up the whole play field and put those three nuts back on. I'm not gonna do it right now in this video because this will sit in place while I finish showing you what to do. But your next step, lift the play field, put those three nuts back on, don't forget to either remove the balls or have a rag stuffed in the in the hole there. All right, so then after you put those three nuts back on the bottom and that whole assembly is now secured, I'm gonna slide the play field back into place all the way in the game and, we're, and then we're gonna do the home stretch. Okay, I want you to set the play field all the way back into the game like that. And then I want you to get your screwdriver and you're going to come around over here. You can probably position the camera to that side. Okay. So the next thing we have to do is we have to put the cap onto there and we also have to install our hex sleeve. So I'm going to remove this screw right here. I'm going to remove this screw right here first. And this screw has a lock washer and a flat washer, and we are not going to reinstall those because the ones that I sent you that are in black are going to replace that. Okay, now that I've removed that one, I'm going to loosen this one right here, just a little, and that will give me enough play to rotate this plastic out of the way. So now we have access to the hex spacer and the flasher cover. Okay, so next you're going to grab your hex spacer. So again, I give it to you in a matching color because the whole idea is um, when you're standing where the player stands and you're looking this way, the big silver spacer gets in the way of this flasher cover and it's kind of distracting. So if you put this hex spacer on, all I did was just bring it in. It's the same shape. Just slide it right over the top and it sits right in there. So that helps it blend in a little bit better. All right, after you've done that, now here's the reason why I waited to have you install the cap. Now, depending on the person, I, I've been talking with some folks online about it, and no one can seem to decide what is the ideal orientation for the cap. So some people think maybe like that, where it's parallel with the side of the game. Other people might feel that this is a good orientation because maybe from the center line where the player stands running back through the game to the corner. Some people might feel that this is the best orientation because it's parallel with the exit to the ramp. So it's up to you. So take a moment when you're here, put the cap on, look around how you want to have it oriented and set it whatever you decide. I decided I want mine to be like this, where the tip of the tail is in line with the hex spacer because that line flows from the center of the play field to the back corner. So that's how I decided to do mine. So now I've decided that's how it's going to be. Once that's in place and you've got your hex sleeve installed, you just rotate this plastic back and then you grab the hardware that I sent you, which is your screw and your lock washer and your washer. You're going to put the lock washer under the screw head and then the flat washer under that. Sorry, hard to see. So it's going to look like this. And then you just put that into the top of that hex spacer. So the whole purpose of this hex sleeve and this black hardware on top was to help it blend in better so that now you can see it blends in with that piece and it looks like it's intentional and meant to be there. Okay, so that's it. So now you're done. Um, so we're going to turn the lights back on on the game and show you what that looks like. And there you have it. So this is one in yellow 
Um, I have a different color yellow um, that I have purchased that I'm going to see if it matches this other yellow a little differently. So I'll have a couple different shades of yellow available and I have those other colors. I'm going to try to take pictures and video of the other colors in there as well. Uh, personally, I like yellow because you can see this corner of the play field is all red. And then that makes this corner of the play field all yellow, kind of balances it out. But it's up to you. That's the great thing about it. You can choose what color you want, choose the orientation of your logo. But that's the Spectre Ramp Flasher replacement mod from Rocket City Pinball. Feel free to reach out if you have any questions or any problems. And thanks for watching.